Hello, welcome to Rock Your Life with Arian Alexander. This is your place to be for all things mindset, spirituality, sexuality, fun. Oh my God, the list goes on and on. And today is all about forgiveness. Oh my goodness. I've had so many clients in the last few weeks come with to me with so many issues about upset about other people and relationships. And I just keep talking about compassion and forgiveness. So I want to share it with you today to really help you understand how true forgiveness is the game changer. True forgiveness for yourself and others is the way to peace, the way to be so loving and kind and neutral in your world. So what am I talking about? Okay. So for example, have you ever been upset with anyone in your life? (laughs) Yes, once again it's a trick question. Of course you've been upset with someone. Your you know, your husband leaves the socks on the floor, your kids don't do what you want them to do, a friend lies to you, someone steals your money. Like I mean the list goes on and on and on. So whenever you're upset with anything in life and you can just fill in the blank, say I'm upset because fill in the blank. It can be, I'm upset because my boyfriend left me. I'm upset because there's traffic on the 405. I live in LA. Any of you who live around here know what I'm talking about. I'm upset because I don't have enough money. I'm upset because my kid, you know, uh, doesn't clean their room. Again, whatever you're upset about, just put the thing that you're upset about at the end of that sentence. So you can, first of all, start there of the, I'm upset because, and through my years of work in personal development and being a coach, and I have a master's degree in spiritual psychology, really the core of what we do in all these practices that I've learned through the years is get to the basics of forgiveness. So what does this mean? When I say, I'm upset because so-and-so did something to me. So for instance, I have a client who he's in a big fight with his daughter. It's a, he said, she said, it's, she's, you know, he's like, you're an entitled brat and I gave you everything you wanted. And she says, you're a terrible father and you did this and this and this, and this is why you're a terrible father. So they're basically going back and forth in their upset and defending their position. So he's defending his position saying, well, I've been a great dad. I gave you everything you wanted. And she's defending her position saying, I've been a great daughter and you've been a terrible dad and you haven't given me everything I need as far as like emotional support. So think about your own life where something like this has shown up. (laughs) It could be today. I mean, I woke up this morning, for example, and I started on my WhatsApp thread with international clients and people I do business with. And this person I do business with was just being so annoying on the WhatsApp this morning, like hammering me with all these questions about this thing. And I was like, oh my God, this guy needs to stop. And I was getting so upset and I was getting defensive because I was like, why is he like hammering me with all these questions right now? And like, none of this is necessary. So I was upset at this guy because he wasn't doing what I wanted him to do which was I wanted him to communicate in the way that I want him to communicate with me. And he wasn't doing it. And then I got upset. So do you see like this upset with other people can come in so easily and so sneakily that you might not even be aware of it. But I encourage you as we're walking through this today, as I'm sharing this with you to think about your own experience in your life. Like what's something that you're upset with someone about, you know, what is someone quote done or said or you know, why are you upset? And just say, I'm upset because, and and start there. So my client, he, if he were just to fill in the blank, it would say, I'm upset because my daughter isn't doing what I want her to do. Okay. So she's her own person and she's doing her thing, but he's upset because she's not responding to him and in the way that he thinks she should, because in his mind and his point of view, He gives her money and food and a place to live and a nice lifestyle, and that should be enough. That's his expectation. That's his belief system, where she on the other side is saying, that's not enough. That's not what I want. I want this emotional connection. So do you see the disconnect? And this happens in every single relationship we have because every one of us has a different point of view. You have a different point of view than I do on basically every subject because you have your own lens that you're looking through. Now, we can agree on points of view of things, but what I'm saying is you walk through life 
with a completely different point of view than every other person on this planet. Because you have your own beliefs, you have your own thoughts, you have your own culture that you grew up with, you have the conscious norms of society. All of this is built into you as you grow up. So your point of view is going to dictate how you respond and what you say and what you do and your expectations and your beliefs. So, you know, it's a part of this process is just really softening first and understanding that all of us have different points of view. And when you can start to soften and really understand that everyone's point of view is valid, even if it's different from yours. And I think that's where we can get in trouble as human beings is thinking like my point of view is the way to go. I mean, we see this all over the world in politics and wars and all that. It's like, my point of view is the best and the way that I think is the way it should be. But who says? Because we live in a world with billions of people that every single person has a different point of view. So who's right and who's wrong? And I think this kind of proves the point. Either we're all right or we're all wrong because you can't pick and choose. The sun doesn't shine down on, you know, let's just take, for instance, my client, him and his daughter as the example, since that's what we're talking about right now. So the son doesn't, oh, P.S., I have his permission to share this. So and I'm not going to say his name, of course, but um, I have his permission to share this too. So the sun doesn't shine down on the dad and the daughter differently. The sun doesn't go, well, one person's doing it right and one person's doing it wrong, or one person's doing it bad and one person's doing it good. The sun shines down on all of us the exact same. The sun is our life force. That's what you know keeps us alive, basically. So this life force, they call the sun, insert anything you want, God, spirit, source, trees, kittens, whatever you know is your source of where you go to for your spiritual beliefs, doesn't look at us with judgment, with differentiation. The sun looks down on us with pure loving and kindness and compassion for all of our points of views. So as we as humans thinking our point of view is the best and our way is the best and we're right and everybody else is wrong and da da da. And trust me, I'm not saying I'm exempt from this. I'm still working on this every day. And, but when you can start to soften and like take a deep breath, in whatever conflict or challenge or experience you're having in your own relationship with someone, your own experience with another human being, when you can just say, oh, that's their point of view, and they get to have their point of view, they get to have their experience, and it's not against you. And this is another point of where you know, when you can really start to see that life wants you to thrive. Life isn't against you. The sun shining down on you isn't against you. The air you breathe isn't against you. Trees are not against you. Do you see these, this life that is all around us? It wants us to thrive. And when you can start living more with that intention and that point of view that life wants you to thrive, it's not against you, then you can, again, start to soften in these experiences with another person and another relationship to see that they're not against you. This isn't like life being like, you are a horrible person and you deserve this conflict at all. It's an opportunity for you to heal and release whatever's in your consciousness that thinks it needs to create this conflict in the first place. Okay, so what is this lady Arian Alexander saying? All right, every challenge in your life with a person, a thing, an experience, whatever it is, is simply an opportunity to heal, release, and clear something in your consciousness that's holding that judgment against them. So let me explain this. So with my client who's mad at his daughter and she's mad at him, his pain isn't about his daughter. It's his judgment on thinking that she should be different than who she is and thinking it's not okay for her to have her own experience. So do you see, he's so uh, hell-bent on defending his position. I'm a good dad and I've given her everything and she's an entitled brat and I can't believe she's doing this and I'm appalled that she's saying these things and I'm appalled she's doing this. So it's all about her, 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 her. She, 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 she. He's pointing the finger at his daughter 
and basically saying she's wrong and she should be different and she should do what I do, what, you know, she should have my exact point of view and do what I do and then everything would be okay. When (laughs) the trick is in life, that's not actually how it works. We can't change someone's behavior. And even when we do, it doesn't make everything okay because it's never about them in the first place. It's not about his daughter. It's about his own belief systems. It's about his own expectations. It's about his inner pain that's getting triggered by his daughter being upset with him. So in the human form, can you imagine this? Like this person you love, your daughter, insert your wife, husband, girlfriend, friend, whatever it is, this person that you care about and you love and they're upset with you, that doesn't feel good, right? Oh my gosh, I hate it when people are upset with me because I feel so guilty and I feel so ashamed and I feel like I did something wrong and I'm trying to make it up to them and I'm like, oh my God, I'm a loser and I'm a terrible person. Do you ever have thoughts like that? (laughs) I mean, and yours might be different, but generally, if someone's upset with us, it's we can go into our own guilt and shame spiral. So that's, but then we can, but then I can cover it up with defense. So that's what my client's doing. He's going into his own guilt and shame spiral because she's reflecting to him the areas where she needs more support. And he's going into his shame spiral and guilt that he's not showing up for her fully in that way. But instead of owning that responsibility and owning his part in this and owning that he could be like, yeah, I really haven't been there emotionally for my daughter. And I can see how that's been challenging for her. That would be owning part of this responsibility for this relationship. But instead he goes into the shame spiral and the guilt spiral that says, oh my God, I'm a terrible dad. I can't believe I did that. I suck. She hates me. I'm a loser. And then he has to defend against it. So then it's like a, t- a kitten in a cage. You know, if there's a kitten in a in a cage and, and it's a wild little kitten and you try to go to pet it and you want to love it, it's not going to just come out and be sweet and cuddle with you. It's going to back up in the corner of the cage and it's going to hiss and it's going to try to claw you and bite you because it's scared. It's scared. So it's defending itself just like all of us have done in our lives. We get scared. We get tight within ourselves. Our inner world freaks out and goes into basically fight or flight. And then we defend against ourselves. And that doesn't come out so pretty sometimes. (laughs) I know I have a temper. People that are close to me know Arian Alexander can have a temper sometimes. And I can flare. I can, you know, I've flared on my friends. I've flared on my mom. And it's not pretty. But it's me getting scared or, or, or hurt or something in me gets triggered. And I think the way that I have to react is in defense. Okay. It's not, but that's my learning that I don't have to react in defense all the time. So, you know, where in your life are you acting? Are you responding from a defended place? So my client, he's not hearing what his daughter is saying. She's saying, she's just reflecting her experience. And he's saying, that's not okay. And I'm going to go in my shame spiral and my guilt spiral. And then I'm going to lash out at you and defend against it and make it your fault and make you wrong. And then the cycle, and then she, she reacts in the same way and the cycle continues and there's no resolution. So in your, as you're following along with your own experience, can you see shadows of where you've done that, of where you aren't actually hearing and accepting with compassion and grace what someone else is saying or validating their experience. Because if you can really just validate someone's experience, that lessens the charge in the first place. Because really, we all just want to be heard. So where in your life are you in a situation or have you been in the past? Or what are you holding against someone where you could actually start? You know, I wonder what would happen if you could just shift your point of view a little bit to accepting their experience, to validating their experience, and to start to looking at it from a different way instead of from your defended place of right or wrong or bad or good. You know, I'm right, they're wrong. I'm good, they're bad. This is where it starts, is really seeing this in a new light, seeing the experience in a new light, seeing the other person in a new light. And you might be sitting there listening to me going, but Arian, this person did this thing and it's wrong and it's bad and it's terrible. Da, da, da. And you are going to want to explain to me for three hours why what this person did is so bad and wrong. 
because I have been a coach for a long time. I've heard it all. And from myself. I mean, I can, of course, get in my own place of someone in my life. Like, but they're, but da, 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 but listen to this. And approving, like trying to prove how bad and wrong they are. So again, this is what we do as humans and it's okay. And I'm not saying anybody's doing anything wrong. I'm saying this is part of the human process is to release this, is to shift our consciousness to something else. So, you know, it's easy to to give me the laundry list of what the other person has done and why they're so bad and wrong. But the pain and the suffering in you and your upset is not about the other person. It's about what boundary has been crossed in you, what expectation what fantasy did you have? And when that got crossed or crushed or unrealized, you got upset. Do you see? And that has nothing to do with the other person. So I have another client uh, that had a boyfriend for a long time and she didn't like his behavior. She was like, he... um he does this thing. He's in touch with his ex-girlfriend and that's not okay. And they shouldn't be in touch and they shouldn't be friends and da, 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 da. And I would always coach her on, you know, validating her experience. I can really hear how you're upset about that and how, you know, and like, what, what is it about this experience that triggers you so much? Well, he did da, 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 and he should da, 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 and he should not talk to her and he should just be with me and da, 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 da. He, 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 he. So, as a coach, I'm always encouraging you to come back to yourself because we can't, you can't heal anything when it's still about the other person. You can't be free when it's still about the other person. So I kept bringing it back to her and saying, well, what's your expectation of relationship? And do you have agreements around this? And what does this trigger within you? And when we got to, you know, what does it trigger within her? It's fear. She was like, well, I'm afraid he's going to be with somebody else and not me. He's going to like fall back in love with his ex and not be with me. And he should only be with me because that's, that's this relationship is one-to-one. So she has all these expectations and fear that if he's friends with his ex, that he's not going to be with her, that he's going to leave her. So can you see how that has nothing to do with him? Because he might just be like, I had a lot of love with this person. She's my friend now. Like this is platonic and it's cool. And like, no big deal. So, but the, my client was so upset in her fear that he was going to leave her, that she couldn't see anything different in that experience, except he's doing something wrong. And I will say once again, you can't change someone's behavior. And even when you do, it's basically not going to get you what you want because it's still your inner process to release the judgments that you had in the first place. So for my client that was upset with her boyfriend, it was really about how do we work with this fear? And what is that? What's underneath the fear? Like, what are you really telling yourself about this? And it's, you know, when we get down to all of our fears underneath the surface of everything, it's basically, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I won't be loved. I don't deserve it. And that's what she was running within herself. It's like, uh, she didn't feel like she was worthy to have the relationship she really desired. So she's finding all these faults with him and all these things that upset her because she doesn't feel worthy of this relationship in the first place. So when we could actually get to her experience and her point of view and validating her experience and her point of view and also starting to shift that shift that point of view into like, oh, there's actually nothing bad or wrong happening here. I'm getting upset because I have expectations of how this relationship should be. And when it doesn't, it doesn't go that way, I get upset. So these expectations will get us in trouble, but only a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> have you ever had expectations on someone? Oh my God. I have only like 80,000 times and they never, you know, who can live up to, who can live up to my invisible expectation of them? Right? So my client that has the father and daughter, How can his daughter ever live up to the invisible expectation he has of her to be so happy just because he gives her food and money and a place to live? And how can she ever, how can her father ever live up to her expectations of him him being emotionally supportive because that's not who he is? So do you see, we have these expectations that are invisible that we put on people and then we get upset when they don't live up to it 
but that's on me, right? Do you see that's that's my expectation that I've put on someone. That's your expectation. That's your belief system. That's what you think people should be doing. But everyone's going to do what they do. No one has your rule book and no one's going to live by your rule book anyway. So there's so many pieces to this and we'll we'll talk about this a little more. I'm going to pause for a short break because I want you to digest a little bit of what we've been dishing about. And I love being here on Fun for Life Radio on the Dash Radio Network. It is an awesome channel. We have so many great shows here. One of my friends, P. Lee Montilla, has an amazing show called Truth and Tunes, and she is a cultural music expert, and she interviews literally musicians, producers, writers, singers, people from all over the world about their experiences. It's behind the scenes. It goes in depth. She plays awesome music during the show as well. So check her show out, Truth and Tunes, and we will be right back. Fun for Life Radio, your soundtrack to the game of life. And here we go. Rock your life with Arian Alexander. If you're just popping in with us, hello. We are talking about forgiveness. I haven't even gotten to the forgiveness part. We're talking about expectations that we put on people and relationships and how I can think someone should act like something or be like something. And then when they're not, I get upset. And so how do you actually be in relationships in a harmonious, graceful way? There is hope for you. There's hope for all of us. It starts with really understanding that it is your expectations and your belief systems and your shoulds that you're projecting out onto somebody else. And then when they don't meet that, you're getting upset. So anytime I say, you say, I'm upset because, and fill in the blank, I'm upset because that guy didn't call me back. I'm upset because my girlfriend didn't do what I wanted her to do. I'm upset because my daughter doesn't clean her room. Whatever it is, fill in the blank. Whatever's after that, I'm upset because, and you fill in the blank, it's not about that. It's about your upset. It's about what boundary is being crossed, what expectation, what belief system, what are you really telling yourself about this? What's the story you're telling yourself? Where are you actually feeling hurt or betrayed? And that's the opportunity to do the healing work and the forgiveness work. Because when you can start to understand, it's not about the other person. It's about your inner experience of yourself and of the world and of the other person. Then you can start to shift it. And how this starts is by, oh, you know, I talk about compassion all the time, but I'm going to talk about it again. Is really, can you ha- can you have a little more compassion? Like, I wonder what it would be like if you can have just a tiny bit more, like 10% more compassion for that person than you did a moment ago. 10% more, just 10% more compassion for their experience. Again, taking the the things out of it, the good, bad, right, or wrong, but just compassion for a human having their own experience. Because what happens is when I can actually start to see another human being, just like me as a human, that's like trying to figure it out in this world and like making mistakes and pissing people off and saying the wrong thing and, and getting upset about things and honking at people and you know, like whatever it is, you know, we are humans and we're all doing the best we can. So that compassion piece is huge because when you can start to lay down your sword and see that person with just 10% more compassion, that's when you can start to shift things. And what you really want to do in this forgiveness piece is this, this is the, This is the key, is the forgiveness, but it's not forgiving the person for the thing, okay? So many of my clients will be, but they did this thing, but they did this thing, they did this thing. And I'm always like, we're not saying that that thing was a great thing to do and they should do it again. We're forgiving your judgments about the person. We're forgiving your judgments about yourself. You see, the upset within you doesn't come in the forgiveness of the other person. It comes in your forgiveness of the judgments of the other person, of the judgments of yourself. So for instance, my uh, father's son client that I was sharing it with earlier, he's like, she is entitled and she, I give her everything and she still isn't happy and that's not okay. So it wouldn't be like, well, I forgive my daughter for Get having food and shelter and not being happy. Like that's not that's not forgiveness. 
The forgiveness is I forgive myself for buying into the belief that my daughter should be different. Do you see? That's where he's getting upset. She's being who she is. And he's over here saying, no, that's not okay. Not She should be different. And I will be happy when if she was different, which is a false belief in itself. But that's you know how we walk around the planet. If that person did this thing differently, I'd be okay and I'd be different and we'd all be happy. <laughs> if only it was that easy. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just laughing. It's like our minds are hilarious. So the, the forgiveness isn't about his daughter and her actions. The forgiveness is I for, for my for my father's son that I was telling you about, father daughter that I was telling you about. His forgiveness is I forgive myself for judging myself as not a good dad. Because see, underneath the surface of what he's upset with his daughter about is the reflection that he's not a good dad and he failed her. And who wants to feel that? And when he feels that, he gets mad and then he lashes out at her and makes it her fault. It's a little bit of gaslighting. We'll have to talk about that in a whole nother episode because gaslighting is very interesting. But let's just call it projections at this point. He's taking his own upset his own fears, his own guilt and shame, and he's projecting it onto his daughter and making it about her. When the freedom comes in, when he can say, I forgive myself for buying into the belief that my daughter should be different. I forgive myself for buying into the belief that I should be different. I forgive myself for judging my daughter as not being okay in who she is. I forgive myself for judging myself for not being okay in who I am. I forgive myself for judging myself for buying into the belief that my parenting is not good enough. See, he's, he's, he's made all these beliefs about himself and his daughter and these expectations and these shoulds and these judgments come up and that's where the pain comes in. Always, only 100% of the time. I forgive myself for buying into the belief that this situation is not okay. This is where the forgiveness comes in. This is where the true compassion and the freedom comes in. Because as forgiveness is not about forgiving the act of whatever it is. It's forgiving ourselves for the judgments that we've created on the situation. The situation is neutral. All that's like in a neutral point of view of the father daughter, the neutral point of view is father says these things. Father says, I give you food, shelter, a place to live. You should be happy. Daughter says, Yes, you did. That's not enough. I want emotional support, and you're not giving that to me. That's neutral. Do you see? In any situation you have, there's always a neutral statement. And my other client, my that had the boyfriend, you know, the neutral experience is. My boyfriend is friends with his ex-girlfriend and that's not okay. That's her judgment that it's not okay. Do you see the neutral experience is my boyfriend is friends with his ex-girlfriend. That's neutral. It's only when she starts overlaying it with it's not okay and it should be different and I'd be happy if it wasn't and it's upsetting me and da 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 da. That's when the pain comes in. So as you can, so, so see, look in your own life where, what's the neutral statement of what's happening or what's happened? I like to start there with clients of like, what's the neutrality? Like, let's just get really neutral in what the statement is. And when I say it out loud to them, they're like, oh my God, you're right. Like that's, that's all that's happening. But then we go into the, but, 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 but it should, na 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 na. But that's, you see, that's, that's your experience. That's my experience. That's the pain. So when I can differentiate and start to go, you know, with the, the father, daughter, When I can encourage my client to release and do the self-forgiveness over his experiences of himself, his beliefs, what he judges his daughter for, what he judges himself for, that's the freedom. (sighs) Forgiveness is the key, but it's not just forgiveness, it's self-forgiveness. You know, a great tool and resource for this is... um, a book from my teachers at the School of Spiritual Psychology, and it's called Remembering the Light Within. And it's by Drs. Ron and Mary Holnick, H-U-L-N-I-C-K. They're my teachers from Spiritual Psychology, and it's Remembering the Light Within by Drs. Ron and Mary Holnick. It walks you through exactly what I'm talking about. The self, you know, all of this, like the expectations that we're putting on people, the beliefs, all of it, and then 
how to really free yourself through the forgiveness. Because the, the true forgiveness, so I definitely encourage you to get that book. It's, it's great. It'll walk you through all these spiritual psychology tools and, and it will help you remember your light within. That's the title. Um, so also, you know, the true forgiveness is <laughs> forgiving the world for everything it does, even before it does it. Because here's the truth. And people don't like to hear this, but like we live in the reality of this human form. In this human form, people are going to betray you. People are going to lie to you. You're going to lie to people. People are always like, I don't lie. I'm like, really? Sure about that? Well, how are you lying to yourself? Like how many times have you said, I'm not going to eat sugar today and you eat sugar? Or like, I'm going to work out today and you don't work out. Like that's lying. It's lying to yourself. So let's be clear. Everybody lies. At some point in their life, everybody lies. So in your life, someone's going to lie to you. Someone's going to betray you. People don't want to hear that either. People are going to betray me. But again, we live in a human form. It's going to happen. Or it's going to happen within yourself. You're going to betray yourself somehow. You're going to have a boundary that you set a boundary for yourself and then you cross it. That's betraying yourself. Do you see? So these aren't bad things. I'm not saying this with like, oh my God, you're going to lie and you're going to betray and you're going to get betrayed. No, I'm just saying this with neutrality. Like this is human form. People are going to disappoint you. You're going to have an expectation of someone and they're not going to live up to it. And then you're going to get disappointed. I can guarantee that 100,000 million percent. Because <laughs> it's what we do. Do you see? You're going to get sad. People are going to die. You're going to be sad. You're going to be mad. People, you know, somebody's going to make you mad about something. So if you can just be in the forgiveness of knowing they're already forgiven, they're forgiven, you're forgiven your judgments before it even happens. Like I forgive myself for judging the next person that I perceive disappoints me, <laughs> which could happen today. I mean, you know, in my life, it shows up in all different ways, but like I'm single and I date and, you know, I meet people I'm excited about. And then when he doesn't call me, are you kidding me? When he doesn't call me, I'm like, what is up? That is not okay. He should be calling me and texting me and wanting to go out with me again. So I see it for myself. When he doesn't call me in a timely manner or text me or ask me out again, I get upset because I have a secret invisible expectation that he should respond and react exactly how I want him to so I feel better. Do you see how twisted that is? I'll feel better <laughs> when you call me and text me when I want you to. But that's invisible expectation that he has no idea about and he probably doesn't even care. <laughs> so when I can forgive myself for buying into the belief that someone should behave the way that I expect them to behave all the time. Do you see? If I have that expectation running that someone should behave how I want them to behave and then I'll be happy, I'm screwing myself for life. So I'm just going to forgive myself in this moment. I forgive myself for ever buying into the belief that people should act like I want them to do, so I'll be happy. <laughs> and just the more I can forgive the world and people in my world for anything before it even happens and forgive myself, then that's freedom then I'm not holding grudges. I'm not running disappointment. Do you see? Not that I expect you to forgive the world before it happens, but it's a practice. It, and it really starts with forgiving yourself and your judgments that you've put on people already for the areas in your life that you're upset about. It's an expectation. It's a should. It's a belief system. It's something deep down that you've bought into about yourself, that it's just coming out in this experience. And, you know, romantic partnerships are where everything comes up. I mean, really, you know, in the family dynamic as well, you, I'm sure you have been in the experience where you get triggered by your family easier than anyone else. They're built that way because we have that intimacy with our family. And then when we're in romantic partnership, we have that intimacy with romantic partnership. They are built to bring up, to trigger our like core wounding, our core hurts, our things, our, our, those beliefs, those expectations. So it's not out of the ordinary for you to get upset with someone in your family or a romantic partnership, because this is where we have leverage. It doesn't have like at the grocery store, if somebody, whatever crosses a boundary, a stranger, like I'm probably not going to get as upset because it's a stranger. Like there's no leverage there. There's no stakes in the game. But when it's my family member or someone I'm romantically involved with, there's more stakes in the game. And so everything gets heightened. And so those that upset will get heightened. So they're here to bring forward these places where you have an opportunity, where I have an opportunity to move into more self-forgiveness, to move into more compassion 
for myself and others, for yourself and others. Okay. OMG. Are we having fun yet? Are we doing some forgiveness? Oh my gosh. I love it. I'm going to take a little break and we're going to wrap up in a minute. I'm going to walk you through, you know, again, like how the self-forgiveness looks like and uh, give you another tool for this too. But we'll be right back. This is Rock Your Life with Arian Alexander on Fun for Life Radio on the Dash Radio family. Fun for Life Radio, because fun is habit forming. Okay, I want to tell you about another show that I love. It's called Hollywood Unfiltered with Dana Buckler. He is amazing. Oh my God. He's going to be on my show soon. You're going to hear like my interview with him, which is so cool. But he's got a show called Hollywood Unfiltered here on Fun for Life Radio. And he is all about, he's like a movie critic. He's been a movie critic for years. He is about behind the scenes in Hollywood. He interviews producers, actors, directors, you know, you name it. He's He interviews people and you get this backstage look at Hollywood, which is so fun because we all have this like glamorous idea of what Hollywood is and it is glamorous and it's fun. And there's a lot to it as well. So definitely listen to Dana Buckler's Hollywood Unfiltered. All right. So I'm going to wrap up here in a minute. I want to give you um, another resource that I love for working with your own beliefs and expectations and forgiveness. And it's the work of Byron Katie. If you just go to thework.com or look up Byron Katie, B-Y-R-O-N Katie, K-A-T-I-E, just Google that. You'll see, find the work. She is amazing. A, a, one of my favorite teachers in consciousness and walks you through four easy questions to start questioning your thoughts and really get to this neutrality that I've been speaking to today. So that's a great tool as well. Uh, I already mentioned remembering the light within from my teachers at the University of Santa Monica, the spiritual psychology program. They're Ron, doctors Ron and Mary Holnick. So go get that book. And then if you want to talk to me, just email me at info at arianalexander.com. It's A-R-R-I-A-N-E. Alexander, A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R.com, info at arianalexander.com. If you have questions, if you have comments about the show, if you are interested in working with me, I'm a life coach and business coach. I love working with people from all over the world uh, for many, many years. So email me at info at arianalexander.com. Also, let's let's hang out on Instagram. Um, Instagram is just my name, at Arian Alexander. DM me, tell you me you heard the show, and I will be so happy to connect with you. That would be super fun. So just go to Instagram to Arian Alexander. Also follow Fun for Life Radio so you can be in the know of all of our awesome shows that are on this station. Okay. So let's just kind of walk through, recap what we've talked about today. Um, I'm upset because. Whatever your because after is the because, it's not about that. Okay. But just fill in your blank. I'm upset because blank. The first step is to just acknowledge this and go, okay, like this is what I'm thinking in this moment. Then you want to move into really accepting the other, the, uh, the experience as it is. That's the acceptance. Sorry. That's the first thing is the acceptance. The second thing is moving into what are, what story are you telling yourself about this? Where are your shoulds in this? What's the experience? Like what's your, what are your judgments? What are your beliefs? What's getting crossed within you? Do you see what, so this person does this thing and what story are you telling yourself about it? That's what you want to move into to start unwinding this, to see what expectations getting crossed within you and letting yourself feel the feelings, really feel the feelings that are coming up around this experience, the anger, the sadness, the grief, the shame, whatever it is, like feel the feelings. The feelings aren't bad. They're here. They want to tell us something. So feel the feelings. And then you move into the self-forgiveness of, I forgive myself for judging this person as blank. I forgive myself for judging this person as a jerk. I forgive myself for judging myself as a jerk because anytime I'm judging someone else, I'm just judging myself. I forgive myself for judging this person as not being good enough. Well, where have you judged yourself as not being good enough? I forgive. So you say, I forgive myself for judging myself as not good enough. I forgive myself for buying into the belief that this person's behavior should be different. Do you see? Because their behavior is just their behavior. They're going to do what they do. You're going to do what you do. So I forgive myself for buying into the belief that my behavior should be different. We've always got to forgive ourselves as well. The self-forgiveness is the key. And again, you're not 
forgiving the actions. You're forgiving your judgments and your expectations and your beliefs about the experience or the person. I forgive myself for buying into the belief that they should be different. I forgive myself for buying into the belief I should be different. Okay? So you walk through the self-forgiveness, and that's where this freedom comes in of really, truly forgiving yourself of your judgments on the other person, and you're going to feel different. And then you can start to shift your point of view of like, what's the truth of this experience? You know, the truth is that person's doing what they do. And the truth is, I don't have to like it, but that's what's happening. And I can be in the situation without judgment. Because from this neutral place is where you can make different decisions and you can make more empowered decisions and more empowered, loving connections. When you're all clouded with your judgments and your anger and your shame and your guilt, you can't make clear decisions. Am I right? Can I get a high five? So we want to get neutral. We want to get free. We want to be in our forgiveness and our loving hearts. And then we can see things more clearly. Then we can make decisions that are more empowered. Okay? So go do your self-forgiveness on whatever it is you're upset about. I'm got to do mine as well all day, every day. (laughs) But again, I'm so happy to be with here here with you talking about self-forgiveness, talking about how to really free yourself in relationships. And this applies to any areas of life. But today I've been specifically talking about relationships. So please get in touch with me, email me or find me on Instagram and would love to hear your thoughts or your ahas. Uh, and if you want to know more, just you know, reach out as well. And I will see you next week. This is Arian Alexander on Fun for Life Radio. And this is Rock Your Life with Arian Alexander. Ciao.